Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and in this tutorial we're going to be talking about how to publish your images to the web. Now there's really two different ways to do this in Lightroom. One of the ways is by using the new Publish Services option in the Library module in order to upload your images to a site like Flickr. And the other way would be through the Web module. So we'll start with the Web module and then we'll come back to the Publish Services in a moment. The web module should look familiar by now. It's very, very similar to the slideshow and print modules in that on the left hand side you have your preview area. Below that you have all of the different default templates that ship with Lightroom. And when you create your own templates you can then save them in a user template or another folder right down there. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the options over here on the right hand side. In the Layout Styles area, you can quickly move back and forth between your Flash Galleries and your HTML Galleries. For now, I'm going to walk through the options for the Flash Gallery. Under Site Information, here's where I can change my site title as well as things like my photographs and add a contact name and a link to email. But if I want something like an identity plate, like maybe a logo up here in the upper left, instead of changing my site title, I'll move down to the Appearance panel click on the identity plate option and then I can either select from any of the identity plates that I've previously created and saved or we can go in and edit. As you can see I can either just type in some text for a text identity plate or use a graphical identity plate in which case I just need to locate the file. For now let's go ahead and use a logo that I've already saved. I'll click OK and we can see that logo appear in the upper left. All right, let's move back to the site info where I can change my collection title to White Sands National Monument. When I tap the Enter or Return key, it'll go ahead and update that for me. If I want to add a description, I can, or I can simply delete that. The contact name area is great for creating a, a quick link to email. So for example, I could type in email me and then down here, I would just need to type in the user at domain. So it would be jcost at adobe.com. Now when I publish my site, this becomes an active link in order to email. All right, moving down to the color palette, you can see that almost everything in this image is completely customizable. In order to change a color, simply click on the swatch and then choose the new color. For now, I'll leave these alone. Some additional options under Appearance. You'll notice that I can change the large image thumbnail as well as the small image thumbnails. So for example, if I want them smaller, let's go ahead and change them to medium. I can also change the layout of these small thumbnails. I can, I can actually delete them and just show a slideshow, or I can choose between paginated or scrolling, which will put them along the bottom. All right, under image information, I can add two lines of additional information underneath my large thumbnail. By default, it's set to title and caption, but we can change that. So for example, if I want to see the file name, I'll select that from the list and it will appear underneath my image. I could also add a copyright, but I actually think it'd be better to go to my output settings and add a watermark. That way, the copyright will actually be laid on top of my image, making it a little bit more difficult to remove. Just like the identity plate, I can select from any of my presets that I've already saved, or we can go to edit watermark. Again, I have the option for either text or graphic. If I want to enter in text, all I need to do is enter in the text down here. Or if I want a graphic, I'll simply click, and then it asks me to select a PNG file. You click Choose and it appears, and then we can change all sorts of different parameters. For example, I could decrease the opacity, I could increase the size, and if I scroll down, you'll notice that I can offset it with the insert, so I could move it in and up a little bit, and I could anchor it to any of these positions right here. We can also rotate it if you want to. When I'm finished setting this up, I would click Save in order to save that and then name the preset. In this case, I'll name it Copyright JK and then Offset Lower Left. When I choose Create, that becomes one of my available presets from now on. Finally, the Upload Settings. This is where you would go in and enter in the information for your server, things like your username and your password and your server path. 
Once you've got that filled in, you can save this as a preset as well in case you want to upload to multiple different sites. Now, once I've got this laid out, I can preview this in the browser, I can export it, or I can upload it. Now I did mention that this is a flash gallery. We can scoot down here and you can see not only do I have the flash gallery but also an HTML gallery. Most of the options between these two galleries are very similar so I'm not going to go through them all. Just one thing I'll show you under the appearance area is you'll notice you can see and designate how many images you want across and down. But basically all of the other options are the same, so I don't want to take too much time just repeating myself. What I would much rather do is scoot back to the library module where we can set up our published services using Flickr. Now what we realized was that that sharing images on your favorite photo sharing site is becoming a weekly if not daily occurrence for many photographers. So what we did is we created this kind of unique service where we can manage through Lightroom what has been published and what has changed since you last published and we can also manage comments. So let's take a look at how we would do this. What we need to do is run through the setup. The easiest way to do this is simply click on the setup. Then we'll type in a description. I'll call this my photo stream. I'm not logged into my Flickr account, but I need to do that, so I'll click Log In. Lightroom needs my permission to upload the images to Flickr, so I'll authorize it. That will take me to the special page on Flickr. I'll need to select this option here because I arrived at this page because I specifically asked Photoshop Lightroom to connect to my Flickr account. So I'll click Next and it will ask me to authorize this. Once I've authorized it, we can return back to Lightroom and click Done. Now I have a lot of options that I can set up. For example, what do I want to use as my Flickr title? Do I want to use a file name or an IPTC title or leave it blank? I'll choose file name for now and move down to file naming. File naming is not something I want to change because when I post my images to the site and someone wants to make a comment or discuss them with me, I want to make sure that my files are named the same thing, so I'm not going to rename them. I will, however, increase the quality of the image that I'm going to upload to around 90. I find that if you change this to about 90, you're going to decrease the file size by about a third. If I wanted to go down to 80, I'll probably cut my file size in half, but I'm going to lose a little bit of image quality. So we'll see if this will work for us. Then I'll go to image size. I definitely want to resize my original files, and I think the easiest thing to do would be to select the long edge here and then enter in the longest edge in pixel dimensions. That way, if I'm working with some horizontal and some vertical images, the 600 pixels will be the longer side, either the length or the height. All right, let's go down to output sharpening. Yes, I want to sharpen these for the screen, the standard amount. As for metadata, I'm going to minimize this, but it will still keep my copyright information with the file. I would like to add a watermark. Again, I can select from my presets or I can edit it. In this case, let's use the one we just created in the web module. And as far as privacy and safety, do I want to make these images private or public? That's up to you, but we have all the options there. Once I select Save, my photo stream is all set up and now all I need to do is select the images that I want to publish. So I'll select these first four and drag them into the photo stream. Now when I click on photo stream you'll notice that I have new photos to publish. So if I want to add these to my Flickr site all I need to do is click publish. As they're being published you can see that it will automatically move them down into the published photos area. In order to see these images, let's go ahead and look at our photo stream. If they don't automatically update, you can simply refresh the page. You'll notice that there's a comment area. If I wanted to add a comment, I could click on that and then enter in a comment. For example, I wonder what this would look like in black and white. Then I'll post that comment. 
Let's return back to Lightroom. You'll notice on the right hand side at the bottom there's an area here for comments and if we refresh that we can see the comments that someone has added to my Flickr photo stream. Well, let's go ahead and see what this would look like in black and white. With the image selected, I'll tap the V key. When I do that, you'll notice that it automatically put it in this different area here, notifying me that this image has been modified. But it doesn't really look black and white, does it? That's because if we go over to the Develop module and we scroll down to Split Toning, you can see that there's been some toning added. So let's just remove the saturation from the shadows and highlights and return back to the library module. In order to republish this, all I need to do is click the Publish button. Now moving back to Flickr and going back to my photo stream, we can see that that image has been updated. But wait, I know what some of you are thinking. You might be thinking that you want to use these published services, but you're not using Flickr. Well, the great news is, is that we've made this completely accessible to third parties. So those same developers whose services you were using before, I would expect would probably want to offer this service in the future. The other thing to note, under hard drive here, I don't have to set up my published services to my Flickr photo stream. I can set up my hard drive so that if I wanted to export a number of images, say to send to a client, but I wanted Lightroom to manage those images so that if I did make changes I would know about it, I can use the publishing manager here to my hard drive. And if you do want to search for a different service, maybe other than Flickr, that you might use, I would suggest just clicking the Plugin Manager either from here, or you can access it by going under the File menu, Plugin Manager, and then clicking on Plugin Exchange. And that will take you to the Lightroom Exchange site where you can browse for third-party plugins or additions to Lightroom. So whether you're uploading your images through the web module in Lightroom or you're going to your Flickr photo stream or you want to use the published services in order to help manage your images, you can see that Lightroom offers a variety of ways in order to expedite that and make it a lot easier for you. My name is Julianne Koss. Thank you for joining me.